um, for an average pack of dogs is very dependent on density of wild dogs. Um, it depends on whether or not we have um, a, a high density or a low density, but in the Sabi Sand system, most of our dog packs are occupying, um, in the Sabi Sands you're looking at probably about 30,000 hectares. Um, so 60,000 acres would be about the size of the packs here in the Sabi Sands, but there's some packs that will go into areas of Kruger and cover close to, to 200,000 acres. So quite big um, areas and obviously the bigger the pack, the more that they will roam around and the more areas that they will utilize in order to be able to sustain themselves, find food, find water, find what they need to survive. So they do get quite big packs. You can see they are starting to wake up now. So there are some that are just starting to bubble about and move around and bounce around a little bit. And this is exactly what we've been seeing most of the afternoon. So I would imagine these guys are going to come and wake up the two in front of me, which is good news because I think there's other guys that want to come into the sighting. And so I'm hoping that once these guys move, then we can at least allow a chance for others to move through because I feel bad if we spend too much time here but you can see it's all quite tentative as well I reckon that there's more than just one new dog into this pack I think there's a couple new males that are here because they're kind of approaching each other with a lot more tentative motions they come down and they kind of sniff first before they're actually engaging with one another so I wouldn't be surprised if we've got a situation where there's a couple more individuals other than just that one male that have joined here from that from a different pack and that's maybe what we're seeing but you can see now the activity is they're all sniffing around, oh, lifting each other's legs up. And there's that typical greeting motion where they put each other's legs over each other's shoulders and go up and rear up on their back legs. So fairly typical behavior. There we go. That's what I was talking about there. And everyone's sort of satisfied that they've greeted the right people. And it's mostly males that are greeting females at this stage. So that dog there is looks like to be a female. I'm just 100% checking, but yes, she's a female. So you can see she's slightly built. She's actually a beautiful dog. She's got wonderful color. Now listen to them. I hope we can hear it over the wind. So it's, it's probably quite faint, but that's the squeaking and they greet each other. So this is not a contact call. This is just a greeting. Very interesting. So they've gone a bit quiet now. I was hoping they were going to get to a very excited chatter. They sometimes do, and just before they hunt or move, you'll find that that chatter gets really crazy and they'll go absolutely mad before they start moving. This is more just them kind of greeting and more of the same that we've been seeing this morning. This is not them getting going, I don't think, just yet. But you can see how close they are. I mean, they literally are in the front of our car and playing around all over the place so they are completely relaxed with the car being around them they're not in any way perturbed if we had to go to some of the you know other dogs that are in kruger and off-road with them they would be a little bit more kind of skittish of what we're doing I'm surprised how quiet they are being given that they are running around generally when we see these kind of social interactions you'll often find that there is a lot more communication and bouncing around and a lot more uh, sort of commotion that happens but I think everybody's still just trying to figure each other out at this stage and that's why we're seeing a lot of this behavior and quiet behavior rather than the chatty noise that we normally see when dogs get going but it's so interesting that they kind of play like this and then there's the teeth did you see those teeth they're amazing So, Stacy, you're asking for the collared individual, are they doing any particular research on them or is it just to keep tabs? Well, Stacy, we were discussing it this morning, but it's basically what they're doing in the Greater Kruger Park region at the moment is to establish a, um, a way of treating dogs for rabies and canine distemper. Both of those diseases are highly lethal to dogs because of their social nature. They spread it very quickly and generally the whole pack will die if those two diseases are contracted. And so they're trying to work out if they can vaccinate them and if they can stop both of those diseases. And so what's happened at the moment is they're doing these vaccinations and the vaccinations need to happen 
every so often so periodically through a two-year process and so they collared so that they can find the packs easily to be able to then treat them and vaccinate them and, and keep those vaccinations up for that period that they're studying them and trying to work out whether or not this is an effective way of of treating them and keeping them alive so that's the the main reason for it is is that but obviously it also helps with just keeping a, a tab on where they are what they're doing they also like to have the collar on on the dogs particularly the alpha packs alpha pairs because they like to be able to know where they're denning so that they can monitor how many puppies they're getting every single year um, and to see what the population density is like within these dogs. Interestingly, apparently the, the numbers of dogs has not really climbed or declined in the Kruger National Park over the last five years. It stayed very relative at around 240 to 250 dogs um, and, they, and they don't count puppies in that. They always just count adults and sub-adults and the reason why they don't count puppies is because there's obviously this high mortality rate in amongst the puppies. It's a 50% mortality that they have and so it's no point in counting the puppies and then, and then losing them. So they do keep a count of roughly how many puppies there are but they will then sort of check it out and change it and, and adapt it by the year after when they become sub-adults. Um, and so the fluctuation of dogs has not been too much, but the pack numbers. Senzo, you're making a friend on your left-hand side here. There's a dog that keeps sniffing at Senzo. So there he is. And he keeps kind of looking up at Senzo longingly as if to say, who are you and what are you doing? Are you part of this pack? <laughs> and so Lou says maybe he likes Senzo's socks. Senzo's got his thickest, warmest socks on today because of how cold it is, so they're not very vibrant. But this dog is just kind of looking up at him and maybe he's jealous of your socks, Senzo, and wants a pair of his own. And he's got some fancy socks of his own, though, little white ones with a bit of pattern on them. Those are not bad socks, are they? The front ones are not so great, but the back socks look quite nice. And I quite like his back socks, the little white tennis player kind of socks that he's got. <laughs> Yes, those socks do look like they need to go into the wash. Lou, you're right. They are a little on the dirty side. And, well, I suppose if you've been running around, rolling around, eating in parlors and fornicating, then you can imagine the socks are a little bit dirty. But there's a female here that's scent marking heavily in front of us. She's scraping up dust and rolling around. That female that just stood up now, so this individual, you can see, look, she's kicking up dust. She's rubbing her face all over the grass. She's just trying to kind of display and and maybe that's also what's triggering these males is that they're seeing these females rolling around like this and that's triggering them to come and investigate what's going on but i think the dogs are going to move now i see one or two that are looking longingly in this direction there has been a little bit of kind of looking and squeaking and there is some movement that's starting to take place you see those dogs are looking back as if to say come on guys it's time for us to get moving it's time for us to go out, start hunting and they are slowly but surely starting to go northwards now which is good news it means that they are pushing back into juma as a opposed to away from Juma.